from the historic Loretto Abbey Chapel. With the kind cooperation of the Toronto Catholic District School Board, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents The Daily TV Mass. Welcome to the celebration of the Daily TV Mass. I'm Father Peter Turonen. The televising of this Mass is made possible by the contribution from two donors. The first are Ray and Joan Wald from Kitchener, Ontario. This Mass is a celebration for all our viewers in nursing homes, our long-term care, and those who are housebound, especially for Joan, who is celebrating her 82nd birthday today. The second is Dr. Eric Ondoy from Orland Park, Illinois, in support of the Daily TV Mass. Our thanks to our donors for the gift of this Mass, and today we wish Joan Vall a very happy birthday. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart, Lord of mercy. Lord, Lord have mercy. mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. <clears throat> o God, perfect light of the blessed, by whose gift we celebrate the Paschal Mysteries on earth, bring us, we pray, to rejoice in the full measure of your grace for ages unending. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Now the apostles and believers who were in Judea heard that the Gentiles had also accepted the word of God. So when Peter went up to Jerusalem, the circumcised believers criticized him, saying, Why did you go to uncircumcised men and eat with them? Then Peter began to explain it to them, step by step, saying, I was in the city of Joppa praying, and in a trance I saw a vision. There was something like a large sheet coming down from heaven, being lowered by its four corners, and it came close to me. As I looked at it closely, I saw four-footed animals, beasts of prey, reptiles, and birds of the air. I also heard a voice saying to me, get up, Peter, kill and eat. But I replied, by no means, Lord, for nothing profane or unclean has ever entered my mouth. But a second time, the voice answered from heaven, what God has made clean, you must not call profane. This happened three times. Then everything was pulled up again to heaven. At that very moment, three men sent to me from Caesarea arrived at the house where we were. The spirit told me to go with them and not to make a distinction between them and us. These six brothers also accompanied me and we entered the man's house. He told us how he had seen the angel standing in his house and saying, send to Joppa and bring Simon, who is called Peter. He will give you a message by which you and your entire household will be saved. And as I began to speak, the Holy Spirit fell upon them, just as it had upon us at the beginning. And I remembered the word of the Lord, how he had said, John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. If then God gave them the same gift that he gave us when we believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, who was I that I could hinder God? When they heard this, they were silenced, and they praised God, saying, Then God has given even to the Gentiles the repentance that leads to life. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. My soul is thirsting for the living God. As a deer longs for flowing streams, so my soul thirsts for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When shall I come and behold the face of God? My soul is thirsting for the living God. 
O oh, send out your light and your truth. Let them lead me. Let them bring me to your holy hill and to your dwelling. My soul is thirsting for the living God. Then I will go to the altar of God to God my exceeding joy, and I will praise you with a heart, O oh God, my God, my soul is thirsting for the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the Pharisees, Very truly I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate but climbs in by another way is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought them out all his own, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again, Jesus said to them, Very truly, I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. So we're well into the season of Easter, and I was reflecting upon these readings over the past couple of days. And of course, when I see sheep and shepherd, the first thing I think about is Mongolia, when I was there for a few years. And I remember having a direct experience of what Jesus says here in the gospel, when he says that the sheep will not follow a stranger, they will run from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. So when I had first arrived at the mission, what happened was that, the social worker, Alima, invited me to go with her to her house. So I was able to go to her gear, a tent that she has there. And so she was showing me around uh, with her children and her husband and the different animals they had. So I thought, this is quite exciting. But what I noticed, uh, the first thing was that the sheep would not come when I called them. In fact, they took off. So exactly what Jesus says. But when Alima was there, or the kids were there, and they would say anything, they would always follow after Alima. 
Why? Because she's the shepherd. She knows her sheep. She actually, when the, when the sheep were born, she treated them as if they were her own children. She would actually uh, feed them with a bottle. She would keep them close to her at night in the tent when it was very cold. So all of this imagery that Jesus speaks of is very, something that's very kind of obvious to the people at the time, and then also for people today living under these circumstances. So I was thinking about this, and then also thinking about the experience of being in a new place. So at first, again, you're meeting people, they don't know who you are, so they kind of look at you with suspicion, and it's understandable. You shouldn't necessarily trust everyone automatically. But then once you get to know the people, we get to know each other, and then you can start to develop a relationship, and that's how you grow in this relationship. And what Jesus is saying here, I think, is that he's saying, look, he says, he has come, he is the shepherd, right? and he's also the gate. So to be the gate means that he is the one way that we have access to the Father. He says, so many people have come, many people have tried and offered all sorts of things, but he says that he is the way, the truth, and the life. And therefore, if he's the way, the truth, and the life, and he says, no one can come to the Father but through me, these are God's words that are spoken to us. And so the necessity of going through him, right, through encountering Jesus Christ, the risen Lord, the crucified and risen Lord, and having that experience, it's through Jesus that we have access to the Father. And we remember that with great solemnity when we celebrated the Triduum. We remember how with the sin of Adam and Eve, how the gate of heaven was shut with original sin. And it was through Christ's sacrifice by mounting on the cross, right? From his incarnation, dying on the cross for our salvation, and then for his resurrection, it's through that that heaven opens. Right? Heaven opens, and we can have, again, an experience with the Father. And then and that's how you can tell that we have a good shepherd, because he comes to give us life. So he's the gate, but he's also the shepherd. So when we see who is a good shepherd, someone who's willing to die for the sheep, to protect them. He knows all their quirks. He knows our quirks. He knows everything about us. And he still loves us and he cares for us. And I was, when I was thinking about this, then I started thinking about a retreat that we had at the Newman Center a few years ago when I was pastor there. And Archbishop Smith gave a wonderful reflection for Advent on the Good Shepherd. And he was commenting on one of the images, one of the um, pieces of artwork in Rome. And he was saying, there's, a, there's this image where there's the shepherd who's basically hanging off a cliff to grab the one sheep that is at risk of dying. So that's Jesus Christ, that he's willing to die so that we can be saved. And another sign of a good shepherd is someone who, again, also uses their staff. So the shepherd has the staff to kind of pull the sheep, right, when there's a lost sheep, to kind of pull the sheep back in the pack, in the, pack the flock, so they don't get lost but they also use it for something else. And this reminds me of what Benedict XVI said. He said that a good shepherd, when he sees a wolf coming, he uses the staff to, get to, to chase the wolf away from the vulnerable, from the weak, from those that are being taken advantage of. Why? Out of love. Because a good shepherd wants the best for their flock. And this is for all of us, right? Whether we're priests, whether we're parents, whether we're educators, grandparents, whatever we're called to it, whatever state of life, we're called to be a reflection of the Good Shepherd, Jesus Christ. And there are many examples in our midst as well. So what's another example? What's another way we can verify whether or not someone is truly a Good Shepherd? Well, do they teach the truth of Jesus Christ? Do they teach the fullness of the message? Do they, or do, are they teaching things that go contrary to the deposit of the faith? Well, chances are, if that's happening, then they're not necessarily a good shepherd. So then you need to be suspicious, because if somebody wants you to have a full and abundant life, they're going to teach you everything that Jesus taught. And that means the good that we're called to do, and also the evil that we're called to avoid. Why? Because when you love someone, you want the best for them in this life. A good father, a good mother, a good grandfather, a good grandmother, sister, brother. Right? You want what's best for the other. You don't want them to get hurt unnecessarily. And there's so many ways that we get hurt unnecessarily. We get lost. 
right, when, we, when we don't have necessarily the help and the guidance that we need in our lives. So how again do we become good shepherds? Well, we keep our eye on Jesus Christ. We remain with, we pass through that gate. We remain in him. We remain in the beauty of the church. We seek his will and we seek to help and also to protect our brothers and sisters that are, that are at risk of being taken advantage of or losing their way, right? Because they're listening to different voices, right? They're listening to different voices. So we ask God for this grace for ourselves and for the church during this season of Easter. You know, we celebrate it with great joy, Christ's resurrection. And that means that we as Christians are called to be bearers of hope. And we know that hope, again, is one of the gifts, the supernatural gifts, theological gifts um, that God has given us. So we have to beg him for this every day. So we ask God in a special way in this Eucharist that he can infuse our hearts with the gift of hope so that we can communicate that with others who are looking for the way, the truth, and the life. Let us now turn to the Blessed Trinity and pray <clears throat> for our brothers and sisters. For all those in our daily TV Mass prayer intentions book, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. This Easter season, we offer our community prayer in thanksgiving for the new life that is ours in the risen Christ. May we be strengthened by his healing presence among us so that we might live in peace and glorify him by our life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. We pray for those who are plagued by doubt and despair and loneliness that they may find good shepherds to lead them to the source of life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. And for the most vulnerable among us, we pray that our good shepherds will protect those from those who seek to take advantage of them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. God of heaven and earth, you reward those with clean hands and pure hearts. In our unworthiness, we bring our prayers to you through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, a work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours would be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive, O Lord, we pray, these offerings of your exultant church. And as you have given her cause for such great gladness, grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time, above all, to laud yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. Through him the children of light rise to eternal life, and the halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful, for his death is our ransom from death and in his rising, the life of all is risen. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with, eight, with angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, 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 
of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, We offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held as worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray the partaking of the body and blood of Christ. We may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Francis our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, our glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, power, and glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. 
Peace. Peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I love our day that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Please join me now in this act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in this holy sacrament of the altar. I love you above all things, and I passionately desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my soul so that I may unite myself wholly to you, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant, we pray, that those you are pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you. The Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Our thanks to our donors for the gift of this Mass.